Hello, I'm Andrew and welcome back, of course, to Aurora 4X. Uh, so, we have a bit of an issue in that right now our fuel reserves are very, very, very low. Uh, if we have a quick check at Sol, we will notice we have 24 million fuel. That's enough to maybe perform an operation at some range, but after that we would not have any for military. That's fine for civilian use, but for military... Mm, so that's in two years production. So what we're doing is we're building the orbital habitat Helios, which has a ridiculous number of fuel scoops and is designed to go sit above gas giants and do the mining, which is great. Uh, it will be done in just over a year. I'm wondering if we should maybe accelerate that. Yeah. So what if we put you down as stopped for now? And we change you to like 80%. We can get done by the length of June this year. That seems a lot better to me. A lot better. Right. So, auto turn. 30 days. Let's get going. Tick, 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 tick. Now, we are next to a new election cycle, so we have run an election, and the results are interesting. So, uh, to remind you, we do have a metagame going on that Patreons and Twitch subscribers are able to do, like, voting and stuff, and vote for a new political party, and people can stand for political party. How are interesting things about- Oh, hello. We've researched Shield Regeneration Rank 3. We actually haven't hit the new year. Okay. Uh, Freighter Mets is only- Okay, you're running out of fuel. Troyes has run out of fuel. Oh, 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 oh dear. That's not good. Which one are you? Oh, the shipyard task group, maybe. Yeah, we'll equalize fuel between them, and then we'll just get you to refuel. Earth. Oh, fuel. Did people refuel in that gap and drop off your reserve? No. Okay, they just need to refuel. All right. Let's see. Now, the main run is up in the election. Okay, you've done that. Good. The main runners in the election are, of course, nearly always the Elysian Astral Coalition, who have had the last two election cycles, and the election cycle previously, which is the one who tends to come in second recently, the Royal Scientific Coalition of Elysia. Um, we had some interesting drama happen in the latest election, because both of them were doing pretty well. It looked like the Royal Coalition were going to win an early lead. However, both leaders of both parties did declare that they were going to leave the solar system before the election results had been read off. Okay. Oh, and I didn't reset the research. That's cool. Which resulted in something of an interesting situation. So technically, it turns out that the uh, Elysian Astral Coalition did win, followed by the Royal Seven of Coalition in Elysia. However, it appears that Calvera, first Imperial Minister currently, and the current Imperial Minister standing for the Elysian uh, El Elysian Astral Coalition. I'm going to call them the EAC and the RSCE. Has left the solar system? Apparently, in terms of RP, they've got this whole um, role-playing thing going, and apparently Calvir has left the solar system or something. So... That leads us in a bit of a situation, because technically, as far as the rules go, there is no such thing as a party that's just someone who is standing for something under a name. And with the someone gone, there's no one to really stand for it. So we don't know if that means that technically, I guess, should it be the Royal Scientific, the RSCE that win with Isol Cryo, or should it be another member of the EAC? But that's not under the Constitution, but it technically seems to be the right thing to do. So right now, we are in a constitutional crisis because we don't know who should be leading the government. 
So I think what we do at the moment is we just have this parliament full of people who are debating what should happen. And what we'll do is we'll put forward a bill in the in the Discord server where we're talking about this, and people will get to vote on whatever the situation will be. So, for now, we're actually not going to change anything to do with the election cycle because it's contested. Either way, uh, supply boron had nurse being exhausted, so we added to the Eiger. We've got spare research labs. We got the fuel production buff. I think we'll probably do the next level fuel production buff because we need our more fuels. Liz, uh, construction production fuel. Thirty-five. And if we go defensive systems, what is there in terms of shield stuff? Thirty thousand. That's pretty expensive. Biface carbide armor. That's pretty nice, though. I guess we'll start on biface carbide armor. Might take us. 11 years, but that's only with five research labs. We can times it by six. Okay. So, until we have more fuel, there's not much we can do. The idea, I think, is we're going to be able to take on the swarm that we discovered earlier in one of the distant systems. But to do that, we'll need to make some adjustments, because if they get too close, they will just wreck us. So we'll have Mizon weapons, and Mizon weapons ignore armor and shields. They just go straight through, and they start doing internal damage. They do low damage, but they do it straight to your components, which means they are very costly and very dangerous. Oh, hello. Right. This is one of the situations where we're going to need to send in our troops again. Uh, nonetheless, um, this means that we're going to need to have a new ship, probably, or at least a new variant. One that is capable of targeting them and detecting them at decent range. Now, we know our command cruisers can detect them at a reasonable range, but none of our missile fire controls can lock onto them until they're too close. Because our resolution is not high enough. Like, we can see big ships because our resolution is like, oh, look, that's a fuzzy mass over there. That's definitely a ship. But as the ship gets so small, we just look at the resolution and we can't see it because it misses the pixels. So what we need to do is we need to make a variant, maybe make two ships, not many, that actually have dedicated fire controls designed to see facts, which means swarm ships and also the facts from the precursors that we've been fighting have been very annoying. So what we'll do is we'll target them with a special ship, which we will design in a bit uh, once we have more fuel. For now, though, I'm going to start telling people to go over here and do things. So hello, population, create a colony on Empress A3. Uh, bring up the galaxy map. There we go. And Empress A3. How do we get to Empress? Because we don't have a jump gate there. I guess we need to set up some jump gates as well. Right. Wrong one. Ah! So you are in Liara, which is not the best place. Sol, better place. Okay. So Nori has a jump gate, so we'll stand a transit to Nori. Then build a jump gate to the Sol system. And then to speed things up, we'll get the Tokyo to jump back to the Sol system. Actually, no, because you want to be going to Mon. Uh, so Greenfield, Standard Transit, uh, we'll build a jump gate, Standard Transit, jump gate back. Okay. Alright, build a jump gate to the Sol system when you're in Nori, then build a jump gate to Empros. Ron in flight, Yan Yan, then jump through to Empros and then build a jump gate back. Okay. 
This does mean I'm pretty sure that our troop transports can't get in there, because if I recall correctly, our troop transports didn't have the capability to jump. I think they used jump gates, didn't they? Let's check. Which ones are our troop transports? You. Yep, there's no jump drives there. So, there is a solution to this. We can use the Dan Abnet. Now, it will use a lot of fuel, which is not the best plan. But we could use the Dan Abnet to take troops there, because the Dan Abnet was designed as a ship to be able to do this. It was specifically made so that it had a jump drive, it was large, and it could jump between systems. It might need a fuel tank to go with it, though. How long a range did the Dan Abnet have? 16.8 billion. If we bring you over... Uh, display... Distance from selected system. 4.1. Oh, 5.89. 5.9, yeah, we could do that. Maybe. Worst case scenario, we have to send a rescue ship. Oh, didn't mean to close you. Wait, what? Uh, would you like to come back? Thank you. Okay. Windows, you're really weird. Can you just not do that? <sighs> okay. I don't know why you decided that my galaxy map needs to be like a sliver of my screen, but... Whatever. So, we take down Abnet. We use Detach. Earth. Load ground units into drop module within fleet. Load ground units into drop module. There we go. Because we don't actually have anyone else in the fleet other than you. We'll get a... I think we could just do it with a garrison battalion because they never defended. So we'll add move, and then we'll just go Nori, Empros, Combat Drop Ground Unit. Oh. Yeah, I have to specifically select the ground unit. And then add move. And then, Shoal Pops, come home. Actually, we don't need to come home. We can wait until you destroy the enemy. Yeah, that makes sense. Boop. And that shouldn't take you too long. Okay, good end. Uh, I think then, we're probably good to just accelerate time forwards a little bit. I will double check my ways that we've added. I think we've just finished a whole load, haven't we? You just said we finished uh, Snowden and Cheyenne. Snowden and Cheyenne. Oh, these are the ridiculously large ones. Okay. And we'll add another slipway. And another slipway. Okay, that costs 6,000 uranium and 6,000 neutronium. Okay. Do we have any reasonably sized ones? Oh, we're the young frau. Yeah, we're making the young frau our reasonably sized one. But we still have very little around the 10,000 ton mark. We're making that to be about 10,000 tons, but that's going to be our science vessels. We might need one or two others that are designed to be for smaller ships. So, like our point defense cruisers. They work pretty well. I don't know if we want to scale them up. I think we're quite happy with them as they are. So, I will add Naval Shipyard Complex at 10%, maybe make two of them. We'll lower you to 10. There we go. Oh, 
Okay, we're going to cut away, and when we come back, hopefully we'll have a bit more fuel. Okay, so Greenfield 2, which we were terraforming with our orbital terraformer, is now perfectly habitable. In fact, it is a balmy minus 2.76 degrees Celsius. Uh, it has an atmospheric pressure of 0.4, with oxygen being about a quarter of that. Absolutely balmy. Uh, and we want to be able to send our people there because of the... There we go. Construction production is 70% bonus, which is really good. Issue being, where do we send people from? If we look at Earth, Earth complains about, oh, I've only got minus 36 million people. Earth likes to complain quite a lot about that. So, well, what do we do? Where do we send people? How do we deal with this? And I think the way we're going to have to deal with this is maybe ship a lot of these things off planet. So we take our fuel refineries, ship them somewhere else, because... They process sorium. We have no sorium in the solar system other than gas giants, and the scoops that use on gas giants process sorium internally. So we can move them. Uh, we could also move some of our construction factories, because we need to move them to the new colonies anyway, so they'll be self-sufficient. Main facilities we need here, but that's causing some issues. Um, financial centers, I guess we can move as well. Research labs will be moving to here for that bonus, so this will be our research world. And manufacturing efficiency is ooh, only 90%. Uh, That's not good. Right. Well... I don't think we send anyone here just yet. We maybe start sending some infrastructure and so on. Research labs very much go over the last moment, though. Because with research labs, we can't send them over and lose out on the research if we're going to delay people moving. We need the people to be there and then very quickly follow the research lab. So that's going to have to wait. Uh, what we could do is... Yeah, you've got no minerals, etc. You're just, just going to be research. 100% research. How many people does it take to run one research lab? Hmm. Put you over here. Talking about task groups. What about my colony ships? What are they doing? They're doing nothing right now. Right. Well. Go to Earth. Refuel. Resupply. And once you're there, we'll probably start moving some people towards the new planet. I wonder if chat knows how many people it takes for each research lab to run. Hmm. Beyond that... Let's look at some of our freighters. You're moving construction factories to Cavallon 2. You're moving mines to Cavellan 2. Uh, I think... We'll grab the freighters out of here. And rename task group. Uh, we'll cancel actually. What's our... Sol Freighter, and then, so it's a space, so... Rename Task Group, Space, Sol... Freighter... 3. Right. What we're going to do for you... ...is get you to move some very basics over to... ...Grenfield, probably. But what basics do we need? We just need people and research up, so I guess we don't move anyone. Um... Okay, well, go to Earth, load, mine, Cabellan jump point, Cabellan A1, unload mine, load all minerals, Sol jump point, Earth, unload minerals, 
Load. We did mines, it, so we've got to do construction factories. Load construction factory. Covellan. Covellan A1. Unload construction factory. And we won't take the minerals this time around because you can fit a lot of minerals in your cargo hold, especially when you've got freighters like this. And then shell pops, and then just go back to Earth. Refuel. And then repeat that maybe 19 more times. That would take you 10 years to do. Good job, me. Okay. Uh, also, we found some more precursors in Empros. I remember that now that we had uh, two things to deal with in Empros, which I probably should have left them there. I, instead, I had to send the Graham McNeil. Uh, we managed to deal with them. So if we look at the population, let's see what we got. Uh, a level three deep space tracking station and no missiles or anything. Okay, that kind of sucks. Fleet, Graham McNeil. Load and then go back to Earth. When you're Earth, do a combat drop. Refuel, resupply, and then begin over. We should also move our terraforming ship to a new location. I don't know where we want to terraform next, though. We had a few good options. Um, nothing startlingly like we need to terraform this, but... Oh, you're joking, right? There were three in Empros? I thought there were only two. Okay, let's uh, remove. And I guess we need to make a population here. Damn precursors, why are they everywhere? You can't trust them. Uh, Grim McNeil, there we go. and then drop them. Right. They've been dropped. Let's do the attack. Damn precursors. Initiate combat against them. There we go. Five day skip. And hopefully... Tick, 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 tick. Boom, come on. No, no boom. Yep, no vending units. Okay. Ooh, what's the wrong one? Fleet task group. Ah, uh, I guess load ground unit. There we go. Then all populations. Uh, combat drop. Combat drop. Uh. A refuel resupply, make an overhaul, and then population. What did we get? Deep space tracking station strength one, lame, and no stockpiles are really lame. We're gonna have a lot of deep space tracking stations, so that's nice, but. <sighs> I was hoping for more. So, what we'll do now, we're getting pretty close to being able to have our orbital habitat set up for fuel. What we'll do is we'll design our anti swarm light cruiser. Probably going to be a variant of the Hastings. Just up those uh, defenses a little bit. Uh, not defenses, uh, fire controls. Also, we'll tell the 
Gaia to go transform somewhere. Where do we want to transform? Uh, right, one of these buttons is our colony. Colony, colony, colony. Potential colonies. Right. Exclude alien control systems. Won't bother about that. Uh, auto center system map. Auto center galactic, galactic map. Exclude plants over 100 AU. Exclude by temperature reduction. No. And uh, maximum colony cost, we will say it's 12. Maybe you should exclude ones that I've already colonized? Because you're demonstrating ones I've already colonized here. Your moon. Why would your moon be useful? It wouldn't. There's no minerals. Okay. Could I only have ones with minerals? No? Okay. Williamson. Uh, Williamson is two jumps away and has only 0.1 accessibilities. Good news is... Uh, right now the temperature is... Does it say the temperature? It doesn't say the temperature. Okay, the atmosphere is pretty nice. We could just add oxygen to that and it would be breathable. Don't know about the temperature, though. Mm. You've got some Sarum and Corundium. Oscar, which is a tempting proposition. No atmosphere, though. Oh, no, it does say temperature over here. Yeah, the temperature need to come down by, like, 50 degrees. No survey at Moan. Uh, yeah, Moan's further than Grenfield. But ultimately, it looks pretty nice. I think we might just wait and see what the result of the survey there is. Nanon is tempting. Again, no survey. Moan, too. Again, no survey. Yeah, I think we'll wait until we've got them surveyed. So instead, let's design our new ship class. So we will be using the Hastings CC, not the Hastings. Give me the Hastings CC. Because it is very similar. Actually, we should find out what we're specced to in our shipyards. We're specced to the Hastings CC, and we're building the Hastings off of that. So we should build it based on the Hastings CC. Okay. Because you can, I think it's like 15 or 20 percent. If there is a 15 or 20 percent build cost difference between the ships, you can still build the same ship with the spec shipyard. So Hastings CC, we will copy design. We're going to rename you to the Hastings B. It's only a slight change and you are going to be a light cruiser. And then we need to get rid of a few things. So we need to up our beam fire control. So we are fully aware of that. And we have missile fire control. Sorry, missile fire control. 21, 8 kilotons at 120 million kilometers, 150 tons weight. Yeah, we need to change that. So this is a missile fire control. Minimum resolution. Ramp that right down. I want to see 750 ton craft. I want to be able to see them at quite a range. And maybe we want multiple missile fire controls. How big is this? 450 tons for the search sensor. Mm. Okay. We'll shoot them at 40 million kilometers. I think that's still fair. And this is 175 tons. Uh, bring it down, 150 tons. 36 and a half million kilometers. Okay. So you are uh, MFC-21 with a 750-ton at 37 million kilometers. 
round it to that, and you weigh 150 tons. We could roll, run a dual setup, have two different fire controls for two different ranges and two different classes of ships. But I don't think that's what we need from this. So this is just a stop cap. So we'll get rid of that. The search sensor can disappear as well. We will need a new search sensor, but we can make this different. So in fact, do we need a search sensor? We don't need a search sensor, we can just leave that off. Uh, there we go. And we've got four different missile fire controls, which means we can lock onto four different enemies. Fire missiles, then lock four different enemies. Fire missiles, lock four different enemies. Fire missiles. That would work. Of course, it needs to use the search sensor from another ship to be able to do that. But... Do I have a search sensor that operates at that range? 450 tons. Hmm. I mean, we could knock out three more tubes. But we're still going to make it so that it's similar enough that it can be built at the same shipyard. So I'll make you an ASS. Uh, 21. Designed to see 750 tons at 37 million kilometer range. And you weigh 450 tons. Insta. Twenty five tons ever, really? Right, and I believe refit cost from Hastings CC. Eligible additional class if this is a primary class for a shipyard. Right, we should actually go to the Hastings for that. So it's not eligible to be refitted to. Okay, we're going to have to make some changes then. Uh, mm, Get rid of the sense we just added. Yeah, the Hastings B can now be made. And then we'll add, what, like more missile fire controls and more... Oh, we don't really need more tubes. What about now? Probably not. Yeah, okay. Funny enough, we can make the B retooled if, if it's for the B, make the C, but we can't do the other way around. Uh, I will drop one of the missile fire controls and I will add back one of those missile launchers. Wherever the missile launchers are. There we go. Okay. 
Okay. Does this cut it? Really? What about now? Really? Okay, cut one of those fire controls, because they are the thing that's different. I think that's what it's complaining about. Uh, and we will add in the two missing missile tubes. Seriously? Still in the Hastings? Mm, this is going to need back and forth. Okay, get rid of another missile fire control. Okay, that does it. We'll check if we can get that last missile tube in. If not, I don't really mind. Oh, that's wrong. Yeah, okay. So what we have here is a replacement of the CC's search sensor in exchange for three extra missile fire controls. And that means we can probably fire, what, like three missiles at four different ships, maybe four missiles at four different ships. Should be a kill. I guess we'll need maybe two to four of these in a group, minimum. But this should do the job. We're going to lock you down. Close you up. And shipyard. Ah, we might need to open that again. CC. Go with the B variant. And it'll take you a year. Okay. Uh, oh god, I guess we need to name them. Battles, but very specifically, this is a different kind of ship. So... I guess you have to have slightly different names. Um, they were medieval battles, but now we need to be more like specific. So, what do we name these? Hmm. Maybe we maybe name them after Hundred Years War battles. Hundred Year War battles. So like Agincourt. La Rochelle. I like La Rochelle. So we're going to have you being La Rochelle. Next one can be the Agincourt. Uh, Poitiers. What else? Castillon. Cressy, Cressy, yes! Famous feat of heavy cavalry with longbows. Uh, breast, always good. Calais, pretty good. Can I'm trying to think of anyone that's particularly good or famous or had a like pivotal moment. Maybe Ruan. Yeah, Ruan's good. Now we've already got the Ruan, but it's a different one. This is the Siege of Ruan. So maybe I'd just call it the Siege of Ruan rather than just Ruan. There we go. Five of the ships. should do.
It's a shame. I've used 100 war names for pretty unimportant ships. Maybe I, maybe I should have kept them. Hmm. Hell, we can reuse them. Navies do that all the time. Uh, okay, we research maximum fuel. Uh, engine power modification, 2.5. That's useful for missiles. Fuel production, 64,000 now. We've added a couple of slipways. Okay. That's looking good. How the slipway, so... Which one was the Sitways did? Uh, Superior and Hur Huron. Yeah, they're up to scratch now. I'm not producing any more ruins or anything like that just because of our fuel issues right now. Yeah, fuel's at 21 million. Uh... I guess we'll just do our research. Do we want to do the next level of fuel? 20,000 points to do it. You know what? I think 20,000 points is worth it. Maybe we'll only assign like 30 research labs to do this, but I feel we need it. October again, so fast. Nathan is amazing. Got 35% power and propulsion. 30% logistics. Yeah, everything else is a bit trash. Power and propulsion, okay. Go for the three times bonus. Uh, where's the efficiency bonuses? Yeah, fuel consumption. I feel an efficiency bonus would be nice. I also feel jump drive efficiency 10 would be great, because then you only need 10% of each ship to be a jump drive. I think we'll probably do the fuel consumption one. This is only going to pay off in the next wave of civilian ships, so it's going to be a while until it pays off. But it'll help. Let's help with the next wave of missiles. Which we're getting pretty close to. In fact, we just got the uh, faster engines, which means that our missiles will just change speed completely, probably. I will also want to put some extra people into biphasic armor. Yeah. And we'll get going. We have ourselves a new ship on the way doing pretty good otherwise. We've crushed a load of precursor bases because, oh my god, there were so many. Three in Empros. But I think we're good. Might just, might just call it there for this episode. Still waiting to get ourselves an ability to take out the swarm. It's really just going to require us to actually be able to get there. Uh, fuel's the main issue. That said, there are enough of them and they may have increased the number. The swarm tend to eat things, other ships, uh, and when they do, they get bigger, and then they grow more things, and then their queens spawn more drones, and their drones murder you because they have a death ball of several hundred drones. It's actually very scary. Um, go away, shoot. Hmm. How close are we to the Helios? Ten days. Yeah, we'll go to that ten day limit. We'll get the Helios going. Why did we only jump one day? Hmm. Oh, three days, I guess. And... Right, here we go. Sol Connor ships, completed orders. Construction of Helios complete. Everything else is good. Excellent. Unused 30%.
What we'll do is we'll switch the naval to 20% and research labs to 20%. No, automated mines. We need those mines. Yeah, automated mines effect is going to go up to 30%. Yeah, start working with those. Meanwhile, we should have ourselves a new task group. Orbital oh, Habitat Earth. Yeah, the Helios. Uh, we're going to rename you. You are now the Helios. Uh, but you'll be permanently stationed somewhere. Right, okay, let's find out. Where are you going to be permanently stationed in Sol? Because you'll basically sit above that planet forever. I mean, it's going to take a very long time to drain a gas giant. It's possible, uh, but it might take a very long while. You know, it's easier to do it this way. Uh, go to... Geological Survey Report. Saurium. Ooh, hello. Emperor, you've nice Saurium. Change you to Sol. Jupiter, half a billion. At point six of accessibility, which is not the best. But it's point six. Yeah, I think we will go to Jupiter. So, hello. I'm going to rename task group Helios hyphen Jupiter. And then just fly over to Jupiter and just stay there. It will take you 23 days to get there. And once you're there, you'll start draining millions of fuel, which is great. In fact, we might set up a regular fuel run once you're there. For that... For that, we might want to just set up a new type of fuel harvester. like a, Not fuel harvester, but like a, a, a fueler. A, a specifically designed, efficient, large capacity refueler. Because right now what we have is fuel harvesters, which are large and slow, and our military ones, which are not as efficient. We want something in between. We could use a military one for now, but efficiency isn't great. So, with that done, we'll set you up, we'll let you run for a little while, and that should give us enough fuel to be able to go on with. We'll need to make more of them. Uh, each of them produces... Helios, 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 Helios. 8 million litres of fuel per annum. 8's not... Oh, wait, no. 16 million. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, yeah. 16 million liters of fuel per annum. 16 million liters of fuel per annum is, is better than 8. Okay, cool. Okay, I'm happy with that. It's not brilliant, but it's enough to keep us going for the moment. So once you get underway, once we've got maybe 30 million liters of fuel, we can start doing our military operations again. For now, that's going to be on hold. Either way, I've been at Realistium. Hope you liked. If you have, like, subscribe. Check out on Twitch when we do the live recordings. Best way to do that is to like follow the Twitters. Until next time, stay shiny.